Good afternoon, good afternoon. We thank God for each and every one of you joining in with us on our Tuesday night live class here at Love Fellowship Church. We're grateful and thankful for each and every one of you joining in on this afternoon. I'm your host, Pastor Anthony Williams, and we certainly would invite you to invite a friend, family members, loved ones, coworkers to join in on our live class where we are teaching out of the word of God and the book entitled Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. We pray that everyone has their book. We pray that everyone who has not been able to get it yet would order their book so that you can be in the know. You can be connected with everything that we're doing and what we're teaching because we truly believe that it's so vitally important that we grow not only spiritually, but emotionally. So let's open up in prayer on tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for this great and awesome opportunity that you have given to us. We thank you for Sister Brenda Davis joining in, co-laboring with me as we teach this life class entitled Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Lord, we want to mature. We want to grow up in every area and every aspect of our lives both spiritually and soulishly, which means our emotional realm. We thank you now. We praise you for your great and awesome power manifesting on tonight. And you be glorified, you be magnified, and you be exalted in all that we do and say. Lord, we pray that your people will be empowered through the word of God on tonight, that you would get the glory and honor and Lord, souls will be saved, people will be set free and delivered. And it is in Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, amen, amen, amen. amen. Sister Brenda, hello, hello, hello. Well, good evening, good evening, so good evening tonight. Yes, we're just so glad that you are a part of this life series and this teaching. And so we're gonna go ahead and share the screen on tonight so that everyone can tune in to the uh, PowerPoint presentation as well. All right, Sister Brenda, can you see the slides? Yes, I can. Great, great, great. Well, why don't you open us up with our opening slide tonight? Okay, as we talked about last week, we're covering emotionally healthy spirituality, uh, where it says it's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature. And also it states discipleship that deeply changes your discipleship that changes relationship with God. That is so true. Have you ever heard the old saying, people do what they want to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many of you have ever heard that? People do what they want to do. Wow. Well, I want to share with you that people do what they want to do only when they allow their emotions to get the best of them. Uh, mm -hmm. When you allow the, your emotions to get the best of you, that's when you do what you want to do. We've heard that all of our lives. Well, people are going to do what they want to do. They're going to say what they want to say. They're going to act the way they want to act. But what's driving that? Wow. What's mm. motivating you to do what you want to do? See, when your emotions get the best of you, and remember your emotions are tied to your soulish man, amen? The three parts of you, spirit, soul, and body. But when mm -hmm. your emotions get the best of you, you will desire to please yourself. And watch this, people more than you desire to please God. I said, when your emotions get the best of you, that's your soulish man. When your soulish mm -hmm. man gets the best of you, you will always desire to please people and yourself more than you desire to please God. So we want to fix the issue of doing what we want to do, which sometimes leads us down the wrong road and making mistakes that we regret for years and years, then we've got to be in tune with maturing, not only spiritually, but emotionally. Amen. Sister Brenda, I can tell you that as a pastor, I, I'm sometimes guilty of it. I know other pastors are guilty of it. We tell people, well, stop sinning. Well, stop doing this and stop doing that. 
But if we don't tell them how, how and we don't show them why they actually pull that trigger of sin in the first mm -hmm. place, if we don't tell them why they, amen, mm -hmm. pull that trigger to shack up or get into an unhealthy relationship in the first place, if we don't tell them the how and the why, why? then all we're doing is walk, 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 walk. <laughs> Yeah, if, it's, yeah, it's if we're not, yeah, if we're not showing them the word, how it compares to what you're saying, they're thinking it's just you talking. Right, right, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And so this whole life series is not just about telling you, well, don't do this and don't do that and right. don't do this. And you're bad if you do this and you're bad if you do that. Or you're good if you do this and you're good if you do that. But it's really about the how and the why. Yes. Peeling back that onion and help all of us understand what are those triggers that cause me to go down the wrong road? What are those triggers that cause me to get involved with the wrong people or unhealthy relationships? What are those triggers that cause me to spend more than my bank account would allow? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? What are those things? And those areas not, are not involved with our spirit, man, because mm -hmm. God gave us spirit, soul, and body, that's and if right. you're not involved with our body, it's involved with our soulish man, our emotions. Yes. And this yes. is why it's so important that you like this, share this, let coworkers know about it, let as many people as you need to, let them know because guess what? This is helping people mm -hmm. to understand what's under that iceberg <laughs> that we talked about last Amen. week. Amen. Yes, yes. What's yes. behind those, those that that onion that you start peeling? But you know, a lot of people are afraid to start peeling. They sure. know what's there, but they don't want to see. They want people to see that ten percent that's up top. Yeah, that's what yeah. that they're dealing with down at the bottom of the iceberg, because they feel people will be judging them, being judgmental, outcast them, everything. So they they cover it up. That's so true. And we got to stop the cover up. Amen. Yes. Amen. So let's go. Let's advance. Last week, last week, we ended right here. Mm -hmm. But we talked about diagnosing the problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's exactly what we were just talking about. Right. Not don't do something, but the how and the why behind it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Why do people do what they do? Why do Christians do what they do so often? So this looks at the top 10 symptoms of emotionally healthy spirituality. And it's tied into the book on page 22. Then it's also tied into the workbook on page 15 and 16. So mm -hmm. again, we invite you to get the workbook because the workbook is not only tied to the book, but it's also tied to the videos that the author provides as well as the daily devotional. Now, again, we're not asking you to go out and purchase the daily devotional unless you have the resources to do so, but at a minimum, get the book. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you got some extra funds, get the workbook because in the workbook, you can pair up with someone and you guys can have a broader discussion, a deeper discussion right. about what's going on in your soulish man and your emotional realm. But together tonight, we want to look at number six because we started uh, one through five. But Brenda, give us a recap of one through five. On the one through five, number one is using God to run from God. Then number two is ignoring the emotions of anger, sadness, and fear. And then three, dying to the wrong things. And then four, denying the past impact on the present. And five, dividing life into the secular and sacred compartments. Wow, that is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So these are symptoms, symptoms of why we often operate in an un emotionally unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then number six, that's where we're going to jump into tonight. Number six, doing for God instead, instead of being with God. Ah. Uh, let me say that again, doing for God instead of being with God. If we want to know one of the top 10 reasons why we are emotionally unhealthy in our spirituality is because we are busy doing for God instead of being with God. Brenda, mm -hmm. give us an example of that. 
the example they provided is I tend to evaluate my spirituality based on how much I'm doing for God. Mm. And sometimes you could tell when, you know, people always saying, I did this, I did this, I did this. Oh, I've been at church all day because of this, this, this. They needed me for this, this, this. And we weigh our spirituality based of doing. Right, right. And you remember in the in the Bible, there was a rich ruler, a rich lawyer yes. that, that, that came to Jesus. And he said, well, I've kept all the commandments and I've, I've done these things. And I, 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 what else do I need to do, Jesus, that enter into eternal life? I've done all yes. of these things. And all of Jesus' disciples were like, yeah, this guy right here, he's on point. <laughs> He's done it all. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to him, amen, <laughs> that, 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 that the greatest commandment is love. He talked about how, amen, there's one thing missing. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then there was a, another part where, amen, the ruler said those things or the leader said those things. And he said, well, sell all your, uh, sell all your goods to the poor and follow me. Wow. Mm -hmm. Follow me. <laughs> so, 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 so we think, Amen. That being busy for God is the same thing as being with God. And it mm -hmm. is not. Mm -hmm. I want to submit to you. It is not. See, if I well, let me use myself as an example as a pastor, it's easy for me to say, well, I'm preaching and teaching, you know, a, a, a three days a week with uh, the prayer line. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching on Tuesday nights. I'm teaching on Sunday mornings. And so that's my Bible reading. That's not my Bible reading. That's, my, not, that's not my meditation time with God. That's my preparation to feed the flock of God. My Bible reading is separate from all of that. If I'm, amen, if that's the only Bible time that I get in is when I'm preparing for a message, then guess what? I'm not operating in the overflow. I'm operating, I'm operating in what I'm feeding and mm -hmm. I'm not being fed. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, you can't, and, and, and it's the same thing for, for believers, amen. If you're only receiving what the preacher or the pastor is teaching and that's your main feeding, your main Bible reading, that's your main study time, then guess what? You really are not spending quality time with God. Amen. Amen. You're doing God's work. work. You're busy, but you're not intimate. Mm -hmm. You're not intimate. And we got to become intimate, right. become more in tune with God if we're going to, amen, grow up emotionally. Because without it, we will we will keep doing the same thing over and over, making same mistakes over and over and over again. Yes, yeah, same as you have to prepare to present to the flock of Jesus. You have to prepare yourself to allow that word of God to meditate, to get inside of you so that when you are speaking to God's people, I believe that's when the Holy Spirit starts speaking to you and you, you, you'll start revealing things to the people, what God is speaking you through. But that's not going to come if you're not taking the time to dive into God's word and allow God's word to, to saturate you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to be able to feed his people. Amen. What I try to do, and this is helpful for people, because you can, you can do this too. I try to spend at least an hour in prayer every day. Mm just in a long time with God, at least an hour yes. in prayer. You say, well, I don't have an hour. Yeah, you had an hour. If you, you rise <laughs> up early enough, you can, you can fit in an hour or you can do 30 minutes here and 30 minutes there throughout the day. But I, I, I typically try to spend an hour praying and listening and communing and meditating with my creator. I truly believe that has been one of the keys to keeping me in a place of not only spiritual maturity, but emotional maturity, because I spend time listening to God, even as I'm praying, and God can bring correction through those prayers. Wow. Mm -hmm. Through my hearing his voice. And so I want to encourage you, if you're not spending time, quality time with the Lord each day, start tonight. Wow. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can't do an hour, but maybe you can do 45 minutes. But I want to submit to you, if you're going to go deeper, if you want to allow God to reposition you for greater in 2022, 
you got to get beyond five and 10 minutes. Because yes. five and 10 minute prayers are just scratching surfaces. And this whole teaching is about going deeper. Deeper. Mm -hmm. That's what that iceberg example last week was all about. And if you didn't get to see that, go to our YouTube page with Love Fellowship Church and you'll see what we're, where we talked about the iceberg example, but it's going beneath the surface what that really helps us to grow and Amen. mature. Amen. All right, number seven. Number seven is spiritualizing away conflict. And that San is, I usually miss out on true peace by smoothing over disagreements, bearing tensions and avoiding conflict rather than disrupting false peace as Jesus did. Wow. What do you think about that, Brenda? I, you know, this, this is so true in families. I know in my family, you know, we kind of like brush things out, push it beside until something comes up and then everybody's on edge, you know, you start ex exploding outside of your normal mannerism because you allowed it to boil out and, and, and not really dealing with situations that need to just come out. Let's talk about it, you know, to make sure that we bury the things that God would like for us to bury them so that we can move beyond that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, some things are gonna cause tension, but I think it's better to open up those things as tension so that you can start seeing each other for the way God wants you to see it and not look at each other for what you think the problem is. And that's why I don't want to deal with my sister or my brother or any family member because of this, this, this. Once you start dealing with it, that's not what you think of when you see that person. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and it keeps you from being fake and phony. Yes. Because the Bible tells us that we ought to drop things and let them go. That means you got to deal with the offense or deal with the challenge, and then you move on from it. And that way, when you see that person again, that, that's not the first thing that comes up in your mind is the challenge. Right. So, so one of the areas that we often are emotionally immature is in our relationship with people, how we treat people, how we talk to people, how we act, how we react to people. And, and this is the how. Well, how do I overcome that? Well, you overcome that by dealing with the conflict up front in a Christ-like way, saying, hey, you know what? I need, to, I need to talk to you about how I'm feeling right now. I need to address this. And then when you address it, you drop it and let it go. You don't mm -hmm. bring it up every time you see that person, or you don't run and tell somebody else how they hurt you three or four years ago. No, you drop it and let it go. That's how you mature. And then when you mature like that, you're most, you're less likely to get so angry that you sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, sin is not the first thing you do. The first thing you do is you cover up the conflict. <laughs> The first thing you do is you try to smooth over the disagreement. You try right. to bury the tension. And when all of that don't work, then you get into unforgiveness. That's sin. Then you get into cussing somebody out. That's sin. Then mm -hmm. you get into, amen, not wanting to love on people. That's sin. See, sin is not the first thing. There are triggers or underlying causes that arrive you at that place of disobeying God in his word. That's, That's what right. we're talking about tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Number eight. Number eight is covering over brokenness, weakness, and failure. The example is I have had, I have a hard time speaking freely about my weaknesses, failures, and mistakes. And that's where we allow people to put shame on us you know, and, and not making us feel that, making us feel less than, because if we feel like if we speak out what's going on or what we're dealing with, what's happened, decisions that we made in the past, what's caused us to be where we at, we feel less than and people don't, it's not going to like us. It's not want to include us. So they don't think we're spiritual enough. How can you say I'm a Christian and you allow that to happen? Um, and stuff and so that's why I, 
people tend to cover up their brokenness, can cover up their fears, cover up their weakness because they don't want to be judged. And you know, that's one of the reasons people stay in unhealthy relationships. Exactly. They stay in unhealthy relationships because they have a hard time dealing with the fact that they made a mistake. Unhealthy relationships are never maturing. Make, yeah, they may shack up and stay in a, uh, that type of relationship because you know what? I just don't want to deal with the fact that I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Or they may be in a relationship where somebody is physically abusing them, emotionally abusing them, and they don't want to deal with the fact that, you know what? I made a mistake. I have a weakness. I keep going to this type of people mm -hmm. for to fulfill a need in me that they really can't fulfill. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm sure it's truthful tonight, hey, amen. Mm -hmm. But when and then again, give, people yeah. because yeah. they have shared and someone went and talked about it and it got back to them and that caused that person to shut down again. Mm -hmm. You know, they finally did open their heart uh, in confidence, in private, in hoping that that individual could help them and maybe not help them personally, but help them get on the path of where they need to go, who they could be talking to, to build upon now that they're sharing, who could they talk to, to help them break down those barriers of weakness and failures of feeling that way. Right. And it's so true. And so who you confide in, mm -hmm. they have to be emotionally mature is what you're saying. Yes. You can't just confide in somebody because you've known them all your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they're not emotionally mature enough to handle what you're dealing with, then that's not the right person to confide in. That's true. And that's where people get hurt because they choose to talk to people that are emotionally immature. Yes. Because if they talk to you about somebody else, they'll talk to somebody else about you. <laughs> That's true. That's so you true. You already see the signs of emotional immaturity in them, but yet you share all of your stuff, all of your business with them, and they can't even handle their own business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's so true, Sister Brenda. Notice, notice number nine on the top 10 symptoms of emotionally unhealthy spirituality. We're on number nine. In the, in the workbook, it's page 16. Number nine, it says this, living without limits. Living without limits. Wow. And in the book, it's on page 22. If you're looking in the book, we're on page 22. If you're in mm -hmm. the workbook, we're on page 16. Living without limits. The example is those close to me would say that I often try to hold it all or bite off more than I can chew. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what are your thoughts there, Sister Brenda? Well, you can always tell when people don't try to do it all, then bit off more they can chew because eventually you see them start getting frustrated or they start saying, I can't do this. This is just too much. I know I agree to this. I can't be part of this. I'm already part of this, 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 uh, because they've taken on too much. And I think when things, where I see things is when you take on too much and you do it on your own and not what God is orchestrating for you to do, because he know what your life is. He know where it's at, what you got going on. So he can compartmentalize the things where you can serve him diligently and to serve him well, when sometimes all you need to do is one thing and do it great, do it with excellence, you know, because you are representing him. So sometimes we do take on too much because we want to see, see people that we're doing things for God, but not really being about God. Right. And I can't tell you how many times I've, I've talked to people as a, as a pastor and I said, and they said, well, I, I, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to be a part of it. And I'm like, are you sure? Have you heard from God? Have you prayed? Because see, that's, that requires maturity. Mm -hmm. That requires maturity. Because if you haven't heard from God, if you haven't prayed, 
then you're doing it to please man or to please yourself, but you're not doing it in, in the manner that God would be pleased. And that's how you have people walk away overwhelmed or frustrated and all these other negative emotions mm -hmm. when they're serving because they take on more than what they, <laughs> what they should. What they should. Right. And we should evaluate what we take on more mm -hmm. so than just taking something on. Because I, I often say this, if, if you're not going <laughs> to be 100 in it, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. Why are you doing it? Because it is you. Will, it will show that your heart is totally not in it. Amen. And we must get to a point where we grow up and become emotionally mature enough to do a self-evaluation, a self-check to say, you know what? Am I, God, is this really for me in this season? Am mm -hmm. I supposed to be doing this thing? And it doesn't have to always be something in the house of God. It could be something that you're doing yes. socially or on your job right. or whatever it may be. It's not always oh, well, we got to shut down things in the church. No, what about things you're doing that you took on uh, that, that had nothing to do with the things of God? <laughs> Sometimes mm -hmm. we take on stuff. We'll take on a, a side job. We'll take on a, 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 a small business. We'll take on all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And it overwhelms us and it mm -hmm. breaks us down. And at the end of the day, did God really tell you to do that? Mm -hmm. That's and so it's true. interesting to me that the first thing people want to shut down are the things pertaining to the kingdom instead of evaluating every part of their life. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, uh, last week, I, you know, I had an opportunity to travel to Pennsylvania for a job fair and it was um, June the 7th. So when I got the email, I'm like, you know, it would be nice to go and, um, but I was like, no, I've already agreed that I'm going to do the class. I'm trying to get the PowerPoint stuff ready. And I was starting to rationalize, well, I can get to a hotel room and I can start doing this, this, this. And the spirit of God said, you're trying to do too much. Right. Just tell her, no, you'll catch the next one, you know, if your schedule permits. And, and that's what I said. But, you know, sometimes we'll try to make things work when it's not there to work. Right. You know, right. you know what your commitment was, and I chose to do the thing, God, versus it was a nice to do, but it wasn't a have to do. Mm -hmm. I could have made it a have to do because it was coming from my director and my manager to try to travel to Pennsylvania, but it wasn't nothing I had really had to do. I had an option to say yes or no, you know, and, and I chose no. And, um, it all worked out. <laughs> right. I didn't miss yeah. nothing, you know. Absolutely. That is so good. Number 10, judging the spiritual journeys of others. Judging the spiritual journeys of others. The example in the book is I often find myself occupied and bothered by the faults of those around me. Mm, <laughs> my mind. Wow, wow, wow. Let me say that again. I often mm -hmm. find myself occupied and bothered by the faults of those around me. Mm -mm -mm. That sounds like Mary and Martha to me. Yes. You remember the story? Yeah. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus, but Martha was in the kitchen doing a lot of busy work. Mm-hmm. And, Mar and Martha came to Jesus murmuring and complaining about Mary, saying, Jesus, aren't you going to tell her to get up and get busy? Aren't you going to tell her to get up and get to work? I'm sitting here with all these folk in the house, and I'm doing all the work while Mary's sitting there at mm -hmm. your feet. What are you going to say about it, Jesus? And Jesus <laughs> said, what? Martha, 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 you're so troubled about many things. But here it is. Mary is doing the, the chief thing, the most important thing, the principal thing, which was receiving. See, Martha was so busy looking at Mary that she couldn't see that she had an issue within herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes it's a sign of immaturity when you're so busy pointing out the faults of somebody else 
You are not self-aware to see your own faults. When mm -hmm. you begin to work on you, that's a full-time job, baby. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> that's a full-time job working on you. Mm. It's a full-time job working on me. And so we must, we must understand that we cannot allow other people's faults to bother us because mm -hmm. we all have faults. We all have faults. But this is what you do do. You pray for that person. Mm -hmm. You encourage that person to do better than what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. But you don't rip them to shreds with your tongue. That's sin. And that's emotional immaturity. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you're, you're emotionally immature and then you're sinning as a result of your emotional immaturity. And so we've got to do better. We cannot allow ourselves to be so focused on everybody else's faults and failures and be so preoccupied and bothered by that that mm -hmm. we forget that we have growing up to do ourselves. Right. We all have growing up to do. Amen. Yes, we do. And so these are the summation of the top 10 symptoms of emotionally unhealthy spirituality. And so the encouragement is for you to take notes if you don't have the book, if you have the book, identify those symptoms that are pertaining to you. Which one of these, and it may be two, three, one, four, five, but which one of these pertain to you and then ask God to show you how you can improve in these areas, how you can mature in your emotional state of mind. Right. So now, that in, you don't remain. In, the in, yes, ma'am. In the book, it does break down where he gives a story breaking down each one of those of, you know, him going through the different things of each one of these symptoms that may be relatable, or you can uh, get an idea of the, what he wants you to look at in looking at these symptoms of how to address it within your own life. That is so true. So we have an exercise that we wanna do, and it's pertaining to uh, the scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses seven through 24. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 7 through 24. If you have the workbook, we're, re we're referencing page 16 and 17. Uh, and this is out of the New International Version. Let me set it up before Brenda reads uh, verse number 7. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 7 through 24. This is a story of King Saul. Remember, the people wanted a king. <laughs> The people wanted a king and God wanted a prophet. Two different, two different scenarios. The people wanted a king. The Israelites wanted a king, but God wanted a prophet. But because they were so immature, they wanted a man that looked like them, that looked better than them, that seemed to be worthy of kingship, that they yes. pressed God to give them a king. And God said, okay, even though I've given you a prophet, you don't want him, but you'd rather have somebody that looks the part instead of the one that I have chosen. So I'll give you the one that looks the part. And he gave them Saul. Saul was a beautiful, handsome man. Saul was everything they thought a king should look like. Mm -hmm. Everything, he acted the part, he looked the part, he talked the part of a king, but yet, was he emotionally mature? Wow. Because if you're not emotionally mature, it's impossible to be spiritually mm -hmm. mature. Mm -hmm. You can't be one without the other. Amen. That's true. And so we're going to study in this text tonight how King Saul showed his true colors. <laughs> mm -hmm. King Saul show why God did not want to choose him in the first place, how God wanted to choose the prophet over the king. Wow. So let's mm -hmm. jump into it. Again, this is 1 Samuel chapter number 15, verses 7 through 24 
in the NIV, the New International Version. Sister Brenda, why don't you start at verse 7? Verse 7, it says, Then Saul attacked the Amalekites, Amalekites and all the way from the Havidia to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agod, king of Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spare a god and best of the sheep and cattle, the fat cow, calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Then the word of the Lord came to me. I regret that I have made the king, Saul king, because he turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul was gone to Armel. There he had set up a wantonment in his, honor, his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgad. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> and that was um, Samuel verses 7 through 13 of verse yes. 15. This is very, very interesting how mm -hmm. the story plays out here between right. God, Samuel, and King Saul. The three primary characters in this text is God, Samuel the prophet and Saul the king. And God gave a set of instructions through the prophet Samuel and Samuel delivered those instructions directly to the king. And they were to go into the Amalekite camp and destroy everything. <laughs> Let me say that again. They were to go into the Amalekite camp and destroy everything, the king Agag, and all the sheep and cattle and all mm -hmm. the lambs and everyone that was existing in the camp, mm -hmm. they were to destroy it. But yet right. Saul had another thought, amen. Yes, Saul was thinking another way. So number three on the PowerPoint says this, what do you notice about God and Samuel's response to Saul's failure to obey. That's the first discussion point. And we want you to put it in the chat box. If you're watching by Facebook Live, put it in the chat box. What did you notice about God and Samuel's responses to Saul's failure to obey? That's 1 Samuel chapter number 7 and verse number 11. Read that verse again, verse 11, Sister Brenda. Yes, it said, I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. So there was a serious conversation that God had with Samuel, the prophet. Mm -hmm. And God said something that we hope we never hear from God. He regretted something. Huh? Mm -hmm. What did he regret? He regret making him king. Yeah, he regretted that he made Saul king. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we never want to hear God say, well, I regret that I even gave them that job in the first place. Or, I regret that I even created them in the first place. I regret that I even blessed and prospered them in the first place. We don't want to hear God say that. Who wants to hear God say that? It troubled Samuel. Mm -hmm. It troubled the prophet because the prophet was a human being. The prophet knew the weight of what God was saying. He understood that this would not be a good outcome for King Saul. And, 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 and just like many of us, amen, we like people. You know, we want to see the best in people. We want to, amen, work with people. We want to get along with people. But yet here it is. God was drawing a line in the sand when it came to Saul, and Samuel was having a hard time with that. 
He was emotionally yes. conflicted because he loved Saul. He grew to love Saul. Mm -hmm. He grew to appreciate Saul. And he was working with Saul and trying to help Saul be who God wanted him to be. But Saul had an issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saul had a problem. Mm -hmm. So in verse in number 3A on the PowerPoint, it says this. How does this differ from Saul's response. So we hear God's response and Samuel's response, but then let's compare and contrast that with Saul's response. Look at verse 12 and 13 again. Yes, it says, um, verse 12, early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in the, his own honor and has turned and gone on down to Gilgad. When Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out God's instructions. Now, what is wrong with that? Because <laughs> he did. Brenda, help us out. What is, what in the world? Is he on the same planet? No, he's not. Us, you know, we can make things out that? when we want to make it out because we, you know, apparently we don't think God is looking or he's not listening. He don't remember what he told us, our instruction was, you know, so you just, you just tell people anything, you know, so it's amazing. This guy <laughs> that they chose, the people they chose ch him. They chose him. This guy was a piece of work. <laughs> he didn't even know that he was sitting in the frying pan. <laughs> in other words, he was not self-aware. Right. This is a big problem in the body of Christ. Big problem in the world. Mm -hmm. Because you don't e when you don't even when you don't even know what your own faults are, when you don't even realize what your own issues are. If you have a challenge with another person and you don't even know the part that you played mm -hmm. in making the mess in the first place, mm -hmm. you got a serious problem. Amen. It's a serious thing. And it's not, it, it's not just a sin thing. It's an, it's a soulish thing. It's an emotional thing. It's, yeah, that, that's was, that spirituality. Your emotional yeah. spirituality. Yeah. Saul was totally unaware. He was not self-aware. That is a key sign of emotional immaturity. When you are not aware of thyself, mm -hmm. you're aware of everybody else, but you're not aware of thyself. And when you're not aware of your own weaknesses, your own places of immaturity, your own places that, that, that cause you to get yourself in trouble, emotionally and cause you to sin then it creates a whole lot of problems for you mm -hmm. and it created a whole lot of problems for saul because right. he came to when samuel came he said the lord bless you i have carried out the lord's instructions wow he That's said kind of like you know you as a christian you either hot or you're cold there's no in between did you follow the full instructions that God has given you? No, you didn't. So he, you know, I don't know if he thought that um, he, he was waiting for a pat on the back from Samuel, but that wasn't Samuel's instruction. He still stuck with what God had to, instructed to do. You know, people in the church say this thing, well, God knows my heart. Well, God knows my heart. And the Bible tells us that the heart is wicked. Mm -hmm. Who can know it? <laughs> <laughs> we use these excuses so that we don't have to deal with the real issues inside mm -hmm. of us. We don't have to look up under that iceberg. And that's where Saul was. Saul convinced himself that he was all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And many Christians convince themselves that they are all right, that they are not the issue, that they are not the problem. And they keep making the same mistake. They keep blowing up relationships. They keep losing jobs. They keep bouncing from church to church. 
They keep, my God, falling out with kinfolk and family members and all of this other stuff because they have this Saul mentality. I'm all right. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with me. Yeah, just like he went and set up the monument in his honor, we keep pumping ourselves up, you know, making us look more than what we really are, uh, making thing, people think that we're this when we're really that, or we got this or we got that, or we got it all together. Really, you don't. Amen. Amen. So, so let's look at verse 12 through 24. Okay, 12 and 24, yeah, chapter, yeah. Well, verse 12. We'll, 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 we'll keep, well, 14, 14 through 24, I believe it is. Yes. All right, verse 14, it said, but Samuel said, what then is this bleating of sheep in my ears? What is this lowing of cattle that I hear? Saul answered, the, the soldiers brought them from the Amalekites that spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God, but we totally destroyed the rest. Enough, Samuel said to Saul, let me tell you what the Lord said to me last night. Tell me, Saul replied. Samuel said, all of you were once small in your own eyes. Did you not become the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel, and he sent you on a mission saying, Go and completely destroy those wicked people, the Amalite, Amalekites, and, and wage war against them until you have wiped them out. Why did you not obey the Lord? Why did you bounce on the plunder and evil in the eyes of the Lord? But I did not, but I did obey the Lord, Saul said. I went on the mission the Lord assigned me. I completely destroyed the Amalekites and brought back I got a god there the soldiers took sheep and cattle from the plunder the best of what was devoted to god in order to sacrifice them to the lord your god in at gilgat but samuel replied does the lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the lord to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen is better than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is like the sin of div divination and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as king. Then wow. Saul said to Samuel, I have seen, I violated the Lord's command and your instruction. I'm afraid of the men. And so I gave in to them. So after Saul said his initial response, and he said, bless, in verse number 13, when Samuel reached him, Saul said, the Lord bless you. I have carried out the Lord's instructions. Samuel goes right in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in verse sure 14, I mean, he jumps right in. He right said, on in. Well, yeah, he's like, well, what is all this I'm hearing behind me in the background? <laughs> Mm -hmm. If you did everything God said, why am I hearing sheep in my ears? If you did mm -hmm. everything God says, why am I hearing cattle, amen, lowing uh, in mm -hmm. my ear? He said, it, and Saul answered, well, it, it's the soldier. See how we try to throw shade on other people? <laughs> Saul here is trying to throw shade, but a few minutes ago, he was saying everything was all right. He did everything mm -hmm. God told him to do. There's that Adam and Eve thing back in <laughs> When you are emotionally immature, you are, you will always look to the cover up. Yes. The cover up will be your defense. That's right. You'll try to cover it up. You'll try to sweep it under the rug. You'll try to look the part instead of living the part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's emotional immaturity. You try to make people think you you're you're mature, as long as they don't look beneath the surface of you. Right. Window dressing. Mm -hmm. But Samuel looked beneath the surface of Saul and he began to share with Saul, Saul, if you're really telling me the truth, then why am I hearing all this stuff that, that's contrary to what God told you to do? That's right. So Samuel said to Saul, listen, let me go ahead and just tell you the conversation <laughs> I had with God last night. <laughs> 
since you want to play this game, Saul, since you want to act like you all right with God and God is all right with you, let me just go ahead and tell you what the Lord said about you. And guess what? That began to break Saul down. Mm -hmm. You know why many people don't want to read the word of God? Because they don't want God to tell them about themselves. themselves. Amen. Because you cannot read God's word and meditate on it and study it and not be broken down. Mm -hmm. Many people don't want to pray because they don't want to hear what God has to say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Because if you spend quality time in prayer, it's going to require you to hear what the Lord has to say. Mm -hmm. That's a part of maturity, spiritually and emotionally. So Saul... He thought that he could do the cover-up thing and, mm -hmm. and, and, get, and, and escape whatever God's punishment was. But Samuel says in verse 22, but Samuel replied, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as he as in obeying the Lord? In other words, obedience, Sam, uh, Saul, is better than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. he says to obey is better than sacrifice and That's to right. listen is better than the fat of the rams wow for rebellion wow look at verse 23 for, for rebellion is like the the, the sin of divination the divination is witchcraft mm -hmm. he said rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance is like the evil of idolatry because mm. you have rejected the word of the lord because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that leads us to number four on the presentation, on the PowerPoint. It says this, what might have been, what might have been going on beneath the surface of Saul's life? The iceberg, that iceberg model, right? Mm -hmm. And for some of you that may not have seen the iceberg model, it's right here on the screen. Number four, it says the iceberg model, we only allow people to see 10% of us. The 90% of us, which lie beneath the surface, remains what? Unchanged. Unchanged. <laughs> so we go back to the questions. Mm -hmm. What might have been going on beneath the surface of Saul's life? Brenda, what do you think was going on with Saul? Saul was just in his own little world. <laughs> Saul was doing what Saul wanted to do. There you go. That's what we talked about when we first opened. We do what we want to do. And he tried to compare and assimilate to what God had told him to do when he knew he hadn't done exactly what God told him to do. He had told him to throw it all. And now he's trying to say, he's trying to put it off on someone else because he was afraid, you know, but when you follow in God's word and doing what he told you to do, God will cover you. God will protect you. He will shield you uh, of any danger of anything, as long as you're following his word and everything. So he just made excuses of what he when was doing. And, are, on, and, then, and then in verse 12, yes, go ahead. it says, early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul, but he was told Saul was gone to Carmel. There he had set up a monument in his own honor and he and has turned and gone on down to Gilgad. And then in verse 24, it states that then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men, and so I gave in to them. Wow. So we see, as you said, Saul wanted to do what Saul wanted to do. Mm -hmm. when, you, when your emotions get the best of you, you will desire to be a people pleaser and a self pleaser. That's right. That's More right. than a God pleaser. That's right. Saul said, well, I did it because the people wanted me to do it. That's a sign of emotional immaturity. Mm -hmm. When you do things to please people, instead of living your life to please God, you are emotionally immature. Mm -hmm. And people will always, watch this, when people become 
your pleasing point, then that means they become your God. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be careful because people will always try to lead us in a direction, the wrong people, people that are not, not leading us toward God, they will try to lead us toward the place that they want us to go instead mm -hmm. of where God would have us to go. That's why you got to connect with other like-minded people. If you're going to grow up emotionally, you can't hang around immature people all the time. Mm -mm. Here it was, Saul was supposed to be leading the people, but yet the people were really leading him. That's right. He knew what God said. He had the instructions. He had the word of God. The people didn't have the word of God. That's they were true. operating in their flesh. And because mm -hmm. Saul was immature emotionally, he, he bowed down and kowtowed to them operating in their flesh. And he couldn't even operate as the leader that God had made him. Right. Because he was spiritually immature. And right. that's why if you look at that iceberg, and there are many examples of that iceberg out there online, and you can see about the 10% and what they break down underneath of that iceberg that you can get and relate to it. What is it talking about? You know, that 10%, 90%. Nine, it's all out there for you to see, and you can relate to it and put it to this, what we're talking about Samuel and Saul here. Um, because of what's going on with inside of us, we allow ourselves not to follow the instruction God has given us because we too busy want to please the people versus what the direction and instruction God has given us. Amen. Amen. So it says in number five, as we close, describe in your own words how Samuel explains Saul's disobedience. Wow. Describe in your own words how Samuel explains Saul's disobedience. And so I think we've done a pretty good job of that yeah. in terms of obedience is better than, better sacrifice. than sacrifice. The mm -hmm. fact that Samuel had to correct Saul for mm -hmm. being a people pleaser and a self pleaser more than a God pleaser is an indication that he, Saul needed to grow up and mature both emotionally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with us. Mm hmm it's the same with us. When you give in to peer pressure as an adult or a teenager, no matter what age you are, that's a sign of emotional immaturity. When people tell you, oh, it don't take all of that. Oh, you can do this. Don't worry about that. That's emotional immaturity because you ought to be able to stand on the word of God and be confident in being alone standing on the word of God. Mm -hmm. See, when you are emotionally mature, you don't have a problem being alone. You don't need 10,000 friends. You just need the ones that God sent to you. It's true. The ones that are going to build you up, the ones that are working on them, themselves, even as you're improving yourself. Mm hmm And just, you know, if we think about what's going on in the world now, you know, you hate to reference Will Smith, but just like Saul was a king. He had been made a king. That's really high up there. Will was at the height of his career, which he still got his thing, but look what he did because you didn't, you, you was all in self. You, you allow yourself to get out of, you know, the realm of where you were at. You didn't, you weren't able to bring it down and assess the situation and do what was best at the height of where you were at that time. And that can cause you to lose so many things because you're not spiritually mature to deal with things that you, you see in the natural and you don't have that spiritual instinct to tell you to you know, flip that script. Just, you know, that is something you need to react to right now. Amen, amen. Well, Brenda, we are out of time. What a powerful session tonight. We pray that everyone has enjoyed this session. Um, we thank God for you tuning in, joining in with us. We're so thankful for the word of God tonight here in 1 Samuel uh, chapter number 15 and verse 7 through 24. We pray that you take everything that mm -hmm. is released to heart. Begin to work on yourself. This is a self-discovery. Begin to work on you. 
Ask God to show you how to become a better you. I truly believe this is a part of our repositioning. But you can't do that if you never allow God in in the first place. Wow. And I'm talking about salvation right now. If you never open up your heart to receive God into your life through his son, Jesus Christ, then guess what? You cannot, you cannot mature in any area because you not yet let God in. So before we close tonight, we want to invite you, if you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, to let God in. Let God in tonight. Let him into your life. Let him into every part of you. He created you, and he mm -hmm. wants to be inside of you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to, you to know him, and he wants you, amen, to know that he knows you best. Wow. He amen. knows you better than you know yourself. So on tonight, as we prepare to close, we're going to extend the invitation for you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we invite those that are watching by way of Facebook Live, even if you're listening on our prayer line tonight, amen. If you've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, or perhaps you're unsure where you would spend eternity if you died tonight, this prayer of salvation is for you. And we're asking you to repeat this prayer after me. Let us pray. Dear God, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, to come into my heart, into my life, and be my Lord and my Savior. Mm -hmm. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me. You rose on the third day, as the scripture says, with all mm -hmm. power in your hand. Yes. And you did it just for me. And I thank you for saving me right now. If you pray that simple prayer, we want you to know that the Spirit of God has entered into your life. You have just opened the door for God to come in. Now, we want you to go to our website, send us the information so that we can get information back to you. Send us your information on our contact tab at lovefellowshipchurchcharlotte.org so that we can get information back out to you and help you in your discipleship journey, of not only becoming spiritually mature, but also emotionally mature. Well, God bless you, Sister Brenda. Thank you so much. It has Amen. been an enjoyable evening tonight. We pray Amen. everyone would have the, an enjoyable rest of their Tuesday evening. God bless you and bye-bye. Good night. Good night.